This tutorial is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. I got a quick tutorial for you guys today. This should be pretty cool though. I went, up, went ahead and put up a tutorial preview yesterday on my channel. Um, if you haven't seen that, I'll provide a link down in the description. You can go check it out. But basically, we're going to be creating this particle swarm. And all these particles are just going to float around in free space. And then they're going to come together and form a word. So it should be pretty cool. Um, there is one thing I want to make note of, though, is that uh, in order to accomplish what we're going to be doing today, you are going to need a plugin called X Particles, and it is not free. But there is a demo version available, so I'll put a link down in the description to their website, and you can go check them out and get the demo version. You should be able to follow along. So anyways, with that covered, let's go and jump into this. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go up to MoGraph and go to MoText. And another thing I want to make note of, actually, is I am working in Cinema 4D R14 uh, Studio. So if you guys aren't finding anything or there's certain things missing uh, within Cinema for you, uh, you may want to check and make sure uh, that you're you're working with the right version. Cinema 4D, R13, and R14 are pretty similar. And uh, you want to make sure you're using Studio because there's a lot of things left out in uh, Broadcast, for example. So just be aware of that if you're running into any issues and can't find something. Uh, but anyways, uh, carrying on, uh, I'm basically just going to leave this as text for uh, tutorial purposes. I'm not going to change that, but feel free to put in whatever you want there. I'm going to go ahead and change the depth from 20 to about 40. And then I'm going to go to the caps here and change uh, this from cap to fillet cap on the start and the end. And this is going to add a nice bevel uh, to the edges of the text. And then I'm going to go back here to the font and change it from this default font to one that I downloaded called Strike Lord. Uh, this one is pretty cool and I've been using this a lot lately and I really like it. And uh, I'm going to do now is go to the scale tool here and I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. And uh, that's pretty much it. Our text is set up. So once you have your text set up, we can go ahead and add in a camera. So I'm going to drag in a camera. I'm going to click this little button here to uh, so that we're looking through the, the camera lens. And basically I'm going to zero out any of this uh, rotation by default and press apply. And then I'm going to go over here to the X and the Y and zero that out as well. And now I'm just going to go back to the text and change the alignment from left to middle. And now um, our text is uh, perfectly centered inside um, our scene. So uh, we're ready to move on. And at this point, let's go ahead and hide our text from the renderer and uh, the preview here. So because we don't need to see that uh, for right now. So anyways, once you have X particles, we're going to go up here and we're going to go to system. And uh, basically, um, we're going to drop that in there and we're going to go to generator objects, choose generator, click this drop down menu and press emitter. And uh, what we're going to do now is go into the emitter here, change the emitter shape from anything you like here. Uh, I'm just going to go to sphere. And actually, while I'm at it, I'm just going to scale the sphere up just a little bit like so. Let's go back into the emitter. Let's go to the emission. And we're going to check off emit all frames. And we're going to change this value, the end emit from 90 to 3. And then we're going to check on the pulse emission and leave the length uh, to 1 here in the interval frame to 3. And uh, we're going to change the speed from this value to something pretty low, like 12. And uh, let's go ahead and refresh this and press play and see what we have. So nothing too special, but we are generating particles. And actually, what I'm going to do is change the uh, the birth rate from a thousand to ten thousand, and I'm going to go to the display here real quick, and I'm going to change the color from this green color to a lighter yellow. All right, so now if we play this, uh, this is not going to be the final color of the particles, just what it looks like here in the in the preview. So. Uh, that's what we have. That's the animation we have right now. Nothing too special. So what we need to do now is go back into the system, go to modifiers, choose modifier. And what we're going to do now is grab a turbulence modifier. And then we're going to go into turbulence here. And we're going to change the strength from the default 5 uh, value to 6.3. And we're also going to change the noise type from standard to curl. And basically what this is going to do is very clear. It just gonna, is going to add some nice turbulence. Um, to the particles and make them look a little bit more random and dynamic and I'm just gonna change our frame range from 90 to 500 and basically what we need to do now is go back into our emitter we're gonna go to questions add a question 
and then you're going to come down to this menu right here open that up and basically what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and add an action uh, with the question selected go to actions and change the action type from the default to control cover slash target modifier and then we're going to go back up to our question and this is basically we're going to designate right here um, what what frame are these particles supposed to start coming together to form the words so let's say frame 150 and we'll give the range of like 10 and that means that frame 150 uh, these particles are just going to be floating and but at frame 150 they'll come together to form the text so on the action um, actually we'll come back to that in a minute we gotta do something else so go back up to the system and go to let's see I believe it's under modifiers go to cover and target modifier select that and our target object is our text in this uh, in this case so drag the text in there as a target object and we're gonna come down to operation and change this from all polygons to object volume and then we're also going to change the speed mode from use particle speed to set frames to reach target and this is going to designate how many frames it, it takes to actually form the text so let's say like 60 and the higher this value is the slower it's going to take and obviously the smaller this number the faster it'll come together so that should be pretty self-explanatory and basically once we have that let's go back down to our action and since we have the action type set to control cover and target modifier we need to drag that uh, right here uh, designate it right here and just make sure that the effect on particle make sure that set to modifier will affect particle and uh, whenever we go ahead and play this um, you're gonna see our particles are just floating around in free space until about frame 150 and then they finally come together and they form our word and uh, basically that's all I did for that, uh, that tutorial preview guys if you went and saw that you'll know what I'm talking about um, but uh, we're not quite done yet we do have our animation set up and it's really that quick and easy uh, but one thing I am going to do uh, real quick is just go ahead and set up our lighting. So what I'm going to do is just go in here and drop in a light. And I'm going to change this, uh, change the shadow from none to shadow map soft. And while I'm at it, let's go ahead and click outside of our camera so we can kind of better see what we're doing. Let's go into our top view and I'm going to reposition this light to just off the left hand side here of uh, the view of the camera and then I'm also going to go back into light I'm gonna make a subtle blue bluish color here and change that and then we're also going to duplicate this light so command C command V on your keyboard and we're gonna make this an orange uh, color so a warmer color very subtle and we're just gonna drag this one directly over uh, like so I'm going to try to uh, get that spaced out as evenly as possible. That's good enough. All right, so now we have our camera and our two lights in our scene. So let's go ahead and go up to Create Object Null. And we're going to go ahead and drag our camera and make it a child of the null object. And then we're also going to take our two lights and drag those in above our camera. And basically what this is going to allow us to do is animate the camera. And our lights will stay tracked uh, with with the camera. So we don't have to worry about... Um, if we rotate the camera around there won't be any lighting on the back side so basically the lights are going to move with the camera so what I'm going to do is uh, let's just do a simple little camera animation so click on the null and you can even double click on this and rename it to say camera and go to the coordinates and basically we're going to uh, keyframe some of these values here so this first one here I can let's say the H it's gonna rotate us horizontally that is our horizontal rotation so let's go ahead and command or control left click and uh, create a keyframe on that and we'll skip ahead a few frames to say frame 120 and I'm just gonna give this some rotation like so and let's go ahead actually let's go 270 and keyframe that so if we go ahead and play this um, there's a camera animation which is kind of neat but we do want to make sure that we're turned all the way around here so at the same time let's go ahead and change this to 360 so that we're facing the right direction 
And um, if we take a look at what we have, we'll go ahead and refresh this real quick. And this is going to be our animation. All right, so pretty cool. Um, nothing too fancy, but uh, you guys get the idea. Of course, you can go in and animate this more if you want to, but just for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm not going to make a really uh, dynamic camera animation. You guys get what, I'm, what you're trying to do here. So uh, that's pretty much it, and I'm just going to play this to about frame 260, and we're not going to need any more frames, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off right there at frame 260. All right, so uh, basically uh, we have our animation set up. Now we just really need to add a material to the particles. So um, if we go ahead and press Command or Control R on our keyboard, do a quick render preview, you can see nothing uh, is visible, and that's because we haven't added a shader to these particles. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So go to Create um, Shader, X Particles Material, and then we're going to double click on this. And with the new shader uh, opened up here, we're going to go to mode and change that from particle color to single color. And then this is this is where we're going to designate the color of our particle. So, for example, if I wanted to make this blue, I'm just going to pick a nice blue color. And then I'm going to go down to, I'm going to adjust the size because I already know this is going to be too big. So let's just say 10%. Of course, this is all in personal preference as well. I'm going to add, uh, make the scale down to 10%, and then I'm going to check on the age modifier here just to make the size of these particles a little bit more um, random looking, I guess. So let me find a nice shade here. All right, that'll work. And I'm also going to go down to illumination and change the mode from fuzzy to diffuse. And... Um, Let's just go ahead and click and drag this material onto the emitter. And let me go ahead and check outside the camera here. And I can better demonstrate what these lights are actually doing if I click on the top view here and press play. You can see that the lights are actually rotating uh, in position to uh, wherever the, the camera is located. So that's really cool. So let me go back inside the camera real quick. And let me find a nice frame here. And let's do a quick uh, preview of that. So it doesn't look too bad. Um, yeah, not too bad at all, but we do need a background here. This will look better if we do add a background. So let's go ahead and make the background for this. So go ahead and go up to the four icon and go to background. And let's just create a nice background material. So double click on uh, down here to create a new material and then click on that material and go to color, texture, gradient, and then click on the box here and change this from 2DU to 2D circular. I'm going to go ahead and right click and invert these knots so that we already uh, have this gradient here. <clears throat> and I'm just going to change this. I'm going to make this a little bit lighter. Um, actually, there we go. That's a little bit better. And I may darken this a little bit as well. Of course, you can go with any color you want here. We're just making a nice uh, subtle background. And I'm going to click and drag this right onto the background. And let's go ahead and uh, skip ahead a few frames and give this a render preview. And now you can see our particles right there. Um, it's not looking the best right now. You could go in here and change this up. So I'm actually going to, let's just do something different here. Let's do an orange color. And this may look really bad. I don't know yet, but we're going to find out. So. Let's do a bright orange. And also, I'm going to go back into my emitter and go to object or go to the emission tab and change the birth rate from 10,000 to, say, 100,000. And just having more particles in there, it should look uh, better already. So let's go ahead and find a frame and render preview that. So that doesn't look too bad. Let me go ahead and go to the output here and change the width from 800 to 1280. Change the height from 600 to 720 so that this is an HD, and this will actually render pretty quickly. So that's another uh, benefit of this. So that doesn't look too bad. Uh, it could be a lot better, and I think it may be the material. Um, could go ahead and change this to something else. Maybe um, 
maybe a purple. I don't know, guys. I'm just kind of messing around here. Um, yeah, that looks better, in my opinion. That looks better than the than the blue did. So um, you can put as many particles in here as you want, and uh, basically that's going to be your animation right here. So. looks kind of cool um, and then here in the end it's going to uh, form the word text and if we give that a quick render preview you can see that right here which is uh, it's pretty cool and if you noticed I didn't use any GI or ambient occlusion in this uh, video but one thing um, I do want to make note of is go into your render settings and change the frame range from current frame to all frames if it's not set there already so um, that you're rendering all frames and not just a single frame and let's see wonder if we just make the particles a little bit bigger so I'm gonna go back into my material change the scale from 10 to about 15 percent and let's see what this looks like so a lot of this is just playing around with the settings and uh, seeing what you like best you know what may look good to me may look bad to someone else uh, so you know, it's all just about like you know playing around and and seeing what you like the best. But you guys get the idea, and uh, you know exactly um, what's going going on. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, that was the video that I put up yesterday. That's how it was done. Uh, I didn't do near as good of a job um, this time around, but that's mainly because I'm just showing you guys how it was done. Um, but still. Uh, that's pretty much that and whenever you're ready to render this out I recommend going to save and then just changing the format to say a PNG um, if you do have uh, After Effects or a program that can handle PNG sequences I would I would save it as a PNG and if you do save it as a PNG for example obviously every single frame is going to be rendered out separately and it's not going to be compressed into a video so you do want to make sure that you are saving this in a folder or you're going to have 260 separate images uh, on your computer. So um, you just save it right there, choose a folder, and then go ahead and press the render button, and you guys are good to go. So real quick before I end this tutorial, I just want to give a quick thanks to Squarespace for helping to make this video possible. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. It's simple and easy to use, has a beautiful design, drag and drop content, very responsive, and plans start at as little as $8 a month and includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. So go ahead and take a few minutes of your time and go check out Squarespace. They have a great customer service team that is willing to help you every step of the way. And since you, the viewer, are watching this video, they're hooking you up with a free trial and 10% off if you use the offer code SIC at checkout on any of their services. So go ahead and take a few minutes and go check them out. And always remember, a better web starts with your website. All right, that'll wrap it up for this tutorial, guys. Thank you for watching. I will be coming out with more tutorials here very soon. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave a like down below. Uh, leave any comments or suggestions that you might have down below as well. And I will see you guys later. Peace out.